Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can add Redish to your Express applications and how you can use it, use it as an alternative to storing your um, session IDs in in-memory cache. So um, let's start. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create a TypeScript project which I've just done. So if you if you want to create this and you don't know how to, just make a source source folder and create an index.ts file. Then you can use the npm init command to initialize the new node project and then you can just add TypeScript and the types for node. After this, I'm going to create a tsconfig.json for my project. For this, I like to use the CLI known as npx tsconfig.json which provides many options for various famous frameworks to generate tsconfig files for them. So what this command will do is it will install uh, it will install tsconfig in my local directory and uh, local directory and run it. So as you can see we are using node so we will use node and it will create a tsconfig.json file for us. So to use this file you have to create a source folder and keep all of your files in that but if you don't want that you can change this path to wherever you are storing your TypeScript files. So I have already installed express uh, let me see have I installed no I haven't installed express so I'll just install express and I think I need to install the types for express although I'm not sure and we'll just see so first of all I'll import express from express I'll create a main function because I need a lot um, I have to use the wait a lot of time so I'll just create a async function and then I'll just console.log the error here what we'll do is we'll create a new app and we'll say app.listen uh, I'll just specify the port and we can do console.log server started on localhost and we'll interpolate this with port here we can define cons port process dot env dot port or 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 four thousand. So ideally this should run on. Oh, ideally this should run on port four thousand. But sometimes in productions, if we are hosting it on the VPS, they give us their own port on which they want us to host our application. So it will run on that. So let's just see if this if this runs. So what I'll do for this is. I'll set up two scripts, one to compile my TypeScript code and the other to run it. So I'll set up a script, um, I'll call it watch and I'll just run TSA with the W flag which will keep on watching it and I'll run a dev script which will, oh this reminds me I need to install nodemon which will help us to restart our server whenever we make any changes. it will install that and I think this is the bare minimum you can have to create a express application let me just add a get route so that we know it works and we don't need this and yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm going to set up a yarn watch script on one terminal and I'll open a new terminal window. Let me just check if it compiled our source code without any errors. Okay, so it has given us some errors. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have to install the types for Express. I'll just do that. And yarn add dash. If I was using VS Code, I would have prompted me to do this, but I've been having some problems in VS Code and I'm going to fix them and I'll be back to using VS Code in the next tutorial. Yeah, so it seems like it has installed and it, it, it shows zero errors. Now, now we can start a server using the yarn dev command. Uh, as you can see it created an index.js file which corresponds to this TS file and we can start it 
and let's just go to localhost 4000 and see if our server is up and running uh, yeah as you can see it's giving us the message which we specified here now let's connect this application to our redis store so if you want to connect uh, your application to redis store you first hand uh, you need to have redis on your system installed there are many tutorials out there which can help you how to install redis on your system and you can use them to install redis to connect a node.js application we need to install some packages so firstly we need to install io redis and then we will use express session because uh, we want to store our session keys in our redis store then we can use connect redis and i think that's enough i don't think we need any other uh, i think we'll need to install the types for io redis express uh, express and connect redis and i'll just if it will prompt me to install them i'll install them so what what we have to do now is we have after we have created our express app let me just remove this we have to create a redis store redis store will be the main uh, uh, main manager of the redis redis instant uh, instance and it will you know manage all of the stuff that we uh, put inside of our redis store so what we can do is we can call the connect redis function uh, and we'll pass this later on so first i'll just import connect redis from connect dash redis also we will need to import redis from io red io redis nice and we will also need to import session from express session nice so after we have imported that and we have created our connect redis function what we have to do is we have to create a new redis uh, we have to connect to our redis instance and we can just call new redis so what this will do is this will connect to redis and what this line will do is it will connect our redis instance to the session where we will be storing our uh, all of our keys and all so for this first we have to we have to pass in session so it will connect to our session here and then what we have to do is we have to uh, pass this as a middleware to our express to our express application so what we can do is we can say app dot use and we can pass in the session function we can use this as a function in itself and we'll call the name which we'll set on the client id um, i just call it cookie or QID and then we'll pass in the store if you don't pass in a store it will store it in in-memory cache and it will get deleted whenever you restart your server but I want it to persist so I'll be using redis store and this this will be passed as the client this is our redis client and we can pass disable touch to true I'll explain in a second what disable touch is text what we can do is we can pass him pass in some configurations for the cookie that will be stored so this session will be stored in our client side but it will all it will store on the data regarding the session in the on the on the redis store so we can pass in the max age or oh, this is this is one second this is 60 seconds which is a minute this is an hour this is one day i'll keep it for three days i think that's enough and then I'll do HTTP only true it will only work in HTTPS same site will be lax so that it doesn't work on other sites only from uh, my API to my front end and secure would be if we are in production then we want it to be secure process dot env dot node env production yeah so after we do this we need to set some other things as well so save uninitialized save uninitialized 
and we have to set this to false so this means that if we don't have a cookie we shouldn't set it uh, so there will be no empty cookies and we have to set pass in a secret and uh, we don't want it to save it again and again so we'll pass pass we save as false as for this secret i don't like to just enter a job in and i just like to generate it with open ssl if you don't have open ssl installed on your system you can just uh, type in whatever you want but i just uh, like uh, consistent base 64 secret so I'll pass in that and yeah that's it now now what we need to do is um, we'll run it again and we'll see if we're getting any errors okay so we need to install the types for all three and add add types express okay and this should be connect there it is so this will install the types for express Express session IO Redis and connect Redis. As you can see, it has installed those types and now we're not getting any errors and it has restarted our server. So, right now we'll do nothing because we haven't set any paths. And let me just open the developer tools and here the network tab. So, not in the network, in the application and in the it should be tab. I'll delete all the cookies. Nice. So let's set up a route to set cookies. I'll call it set cookies and yeah. And we'll set request response. What we'll do is we'll set rec dot session dot id equal to anything we just set message we'll call it message and we'll set it to let's say hello world and then we can say res dot json message cookie set successfully nice now if we refresh this page it will set a cookie and you will see that there will be a cookie here if i just refresh this page oh wait uh, okay yeah so there is no slash route you have to go to slash cookies and if we go there as you can see it has set a cookie here with this value is an encrypted value and let's now let's try to pass this cookie we'll go to app dot get get cookies where we'll just get the piece we can say res dot json cookie value will be rec dot session dot message and if you go back if you refresh this page it's nice to refresh it and we'll go to get cookies here you'll see the message is hello world which is this just coming from here and if we delete this i think we'll get an error or i don't think we'll get anything yeah so there's nothing here so let's just try that again uh, yeah so let's just try that again we'll go to set cookies and it will set the cookies and if we go to get cookies it will get the cookie now the interesting thing is if you have redis installed on your system okay so now if you go to uh, redis cli and if you search right now to keys star it will show you that it's an empty array because i just cleared my cookie so now if i go back to set cookies you will see that it has stored a cookie in a Redis database which is a session which express session uses as a prefix and this is the message which is encrypted and if we remove it using flush all which will remove it and as you can see it's an empty array then if we come here to get cookie it won't have any cookies as you can see I also think 
I don't think you can set it but um, this is how you can use Redis in your application to store data which persists throughout reloads of server that is after your server changes every time the data doesn't get lost and it is, this is a better way than in-memory cache because if due to some problems you have to in production if you have to apply a small fix to an application all of the session of your user will be lost and they'll have to log in again although it is not that big of a deal sometimes it can cause a problem and it's always better to use a persistent cache and yeah so this is how you can implement Redis in your applications if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel for more such content bye